Ah, oh, come on. Two ten twenty-two. Well, I will sacrifice anyway, so. Hey, Pine! What's up? What a waste. Can't afford anything anyway, so... Back from a few weeks uh, of uh, of just not doing a lot. Um, just been nice. Sacrifice once and get the dash. Let's do that. So what's uh, what's the plan? Uh, the plan is to continue working on this for a bit and uh, try to make an actual Steam release out of it. No. Um. And I've actually been doing a little bit of um, of work on on some stuff where I've been detailing a lot of different spells. So break down the music a little bit so I don't feel, feel like I have to scream over it. Um, and I have some like bigger, larger scale stuff. Um, that I think makes sense. Um, but I don't know yet. So um, right now it's it's a few spells and a, a few more blessings. And I think I want to have it the other way around. So that we have a lot of different active things you can do. And swapping those out um, in your run makes you make you play a lot different between the different runs. Um, and the combination of the spells uh, where like different frost spells work well together, for example, like you have different things that chills and eventually freezes enemies. And then you have the shatter spell that breaks all the freeze frozen enemies, uh, potentially killing them. But that, like the combination of those two makes it, hey, Ruggers, um uh, thank you thank you good to see you too um yeah so you got you got the different uh different spells and different spells kind of work together in in, in different ways maybe 
a spell that slows you down and some AoE attack might be working well together and, and learning which ones exist and so on might give you that sense of, you know, like learning the game and being good at the meta of the game. Um, so that's one, one of the parts. Uh, combined with that then, the, um, the blessings I think should be... You shouldn't have that many blessings like the... Um, the passive the passive stuff should have quite as much of that um, as it is right now um, and when that when you have the passive blessings they should also be like changing how you play a little bit more um, and then there's a lot of like Things like uh, enemies that damage you should either do, either do that through an attack that's kind of telegraphs. So the enemy runs towards you and then it stops and then it jumps at you or something. And then there's a swing and some kind of effect. So you know that that's when you take gonna take damage because now it feels a lot like you don't know why you died uh, in a lot of places. And also like. This could 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 help with a sense of like you did like you're not blaming blaming the game as much. Um, so I, yeah, I think uh, like touch damage might be on the way out. Um, I want bigger difference between small enemies, so maybe you could always kill small enemies in one hit. That's not what they're about, like being tanky or whatever. They're about um, kind of shifting your focus around the, the, the play field and just making you move around in a bit. And then larger enemies would take longer to kill and but, but be more interesting. So I wouldn't have like a big lumbering thing that just moves towards you. Maybe I have one of those, but uh, more likely I would have a thing that does that and then kind of invalidates some part of the arena. Like maybe it leaves a trail that's a lot longer or it kind of telegraphs attacks that maybe would hit like the entire left side of the screen or something uh, um, then uh, to your point uh, mind rage one arena I uh, there there are some ideas like levels arranged uh, in layers so you would have uh, Enemy, uh, like the le levels would be like going on top and below, um, and it would be one room, and it would be a um, what's it called? A uh, an elevator in the center that you kind of, when you're done killing enemies, you st step on the elevator, and then that kind of mo moves down. Uh, and then every level would be like a level in a building or a floor in a building. Maybe I should call them floors instead. That's much better. Floors. So I have this this plan of splitting it out, uh, and I think maybe I should shift this around a little bit because um, when I thought about this, I was co kind of just copying the uh, um, the number of levels from and bosses from uh, from Snake or X, and I think what it should actually be is like three floors and then a boss I think at least so um, that way I get, get a little bit closer to the number of levels that I actually want yeah so it's a tower and you're going down in the elevator I think or you you could be going up um, I'm not sure maybe it's a mage tower like one of those really cool uh, ones but you, you might not like see it uh, from the outside as much but elevator down uh, yeah I don't know <laughs> yeah 
I wonder, wonder about like... Right now I got the shop in the same location as... Uh, um, as everything else. It, it could be cool to have that... Like inside of the elevator, the shop would be like there somehow. So you, so you kind of do this sh things going by the window really fast. Uh, so it looks like you're moving and then once you're stepping, press the button, the, the door opens and you kind of go, go to the next level. I don't know, uh, maybe that will be too weird. Um, but yeah, so there, there's a couple of things here. Um, and also, things I haven't written down would be things like what kind of pillars the game would stand on. Like something would be like. So I played a lot of um, Death's Door. Oh, let's bring the game down a little bit. Is it better? Hey, I do. Thank you for letting me know. Um, but yeah, I've been playing a lot of Death's Door, and I've been like really tempted to do things like melee um, but opening up the game right now just playing around with it it feels like yeah I shouldn't I shouldn't I shouldn't stray too far from this because I think it works as it is um, but we need something to to kind of spice it up a little bit and I think a lot of that comes just from the uh, from the enemy, uh, enemy designs and, and, and skill designs rather than adding whole different layers. That said, I think like having spells that are melee, really strong short range, uh, like a claw or something, uh, would be uh, would be a would be a cool idea. I've also thought about things like limiting the number of shots you can take to, to kind of because in, the cool thing about the death's door is the same as in in uh, many of these games where you have like a resource like mana or ammo or something and then you, you kind of go in you slash with your sword and then it builds up some resource and then you back out and then you shoot using that resource um, um, i kind of dig that I want to get away from having too much just shooting and like backing away because it feels uh, I don't know so I want to add some way of getting that going in going out maybe it's through uh, I've been thinking about like having a mana system uh, mana that, that kind of uh, slowly recharges um, and then you would drop uh, health or mana orbs from the enemies so you can kind of go in there and pick up the orb so you kill, you have to kite the enemy so you can pick up the mono orb so that you get mana back faster. Uh, but you could also just kite them and then um, um, build slowly, just not shoot for a bit and then you get some mana back. I don't know. Also, well, the reason I say I don't know is because I feel like maybe what will happen with that is that... Uh, you will most likely always take the safe route, which would be like move away and then just wait, which feels a little bit like not the gameplay that that, that I was going for with that. Uh, I just feel bad about not having <laughs> guts enough to run in. Another way of thinking of it is that every spell has a number of charges. Um, so maybe um, the slashy... I'm thinking about it, of it like a claw, like a... Uh, Astral claw or like some 
uh, cane slash thing. Maybe that has like five, uh, three to five charges. So when you click, you can do that quickly, like five times, and then you gotta wait for it to recharge. Um, and the same with like this this QQ spell, you can't like continuously shoot. So you can shoot ten ten shots, and then you gotta wait before you can do something else. Um, and that's where you would do different things. Also, like maybe limiting while you're shooting, limiting your movement speed a little bit. Um, and that combined with like fewer enemies with more intricate patterns think could work pretty well so um, what am I running I'm running blizzard so I guess could do this is level two yes, please. Well, do I dare here so let's go ah. there like it doesn't feel super good to die like that. <clears throat> Let's do another run here. Uh, yeah. Should we do... Should we sell our QQ for rail? Just see how that feels. Hey, Araxi! Welcome, Raiders. How are you doing? Uh, let's do this. Let's go to. Uh, it really feels like I would, would like more. Faster railgun. <laughs> Why isn't it killing the enemies? Or actually, the problem is the dash. Um, I would like. One sacrifice and then like does this affect doesn't affect the the rail gun does it? But it does affect the Hey, I'm stuck in some kind of I think the rail gun is too weak. Feel Sort of a twin stick shooter. Um, it's taken inspiration from games like uh, Snake or X, uh, where you have this shock that drives a lot of it. Um, so it's a little bit roguelike, a little bit like auto chess, a little bit uh, of all of those. So do we save a little bit so we can get more? This is, um, yeah, that, that's the game, and, and I haven't been really working on it for a couple of weeks due to a vacation. Uh, I'm just now coming back at it with uh, some fresh, fresh eyes. Um, 
and, and like during that time off I've been like having a lot of thoughts and coming back at it now it, it feels like it, it's kind of working better than I was remembering it already it already feels like you gotta kind of um, maybe I'm, I'm these things about like adding mana and so on and, and reducing the uh, um, running backwardsiness of, of the things. Um, maybe it's not as needed as, as I was thinking. Maybe I'm overthinking it a little bit. Um, actually, what I feel like is, is, is playing uh, I, I wish there was more uh, active spells, I think. That's just the... Yeah, corpse Explosion is an interesting one, for example. Let's do Corpse Explosion... Uh, just Haste, maybe? Shoot a little bit faster. Wait, yeah, that's... I do feel like I'm moving too slow or something. Trigger effects. Uh, what's that? Okay, stun kill is always good. Pierce is always good. What do I have? 193? I could, I could sacrifice once and then go face bouncy and then go. No. Bullshit. <clears throat> okay. So the question always becomes like, okay, so where do I start? <laughs> what do I do? What are, what are we uh, itching to do here? <clears throat> so split up all the spells in different schools. Um, some of these exist already, some of them don't. Um, oh, sorry. How about now? Is it better? Thank you for letting me know, Steve. I've been, um, I was, uh, uh, recording some Death's Door gameplay for, for a friend and I, I just wanted that music to be in there. Want more music? Maybe now. It feels like it should be pretty balanced now. But yeah. So the thing the thing I said was that I, I would like more spells, different attacks. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Good. Um, um Um, and I, I feel like, um, maybe we should have arcane, I'm gonna remove, uh, re redo these, uh, names later on, of course, but, uh, the one, the main, like, pew, pew, pew spell I got right now is probably the one that doesn't apply damage over time. Uh, on impact like it's not the fire spell it's the arcane magic whatever i'm using a lot of like world of warcraft terms um um oh um one thing i want to do is, is like have you choose a base spell as the first so when you're just joining 
or when you're just booting the game up, these three should be different spells, and you shouldn't have any spells except for maybe dash. Uh, or potentially not even. Well, I don't know. How would it be to play without dash? Is that even possible? Or now I can't like dash. Now I have to like, move away from the enemies. And I'll take some damage. It kind of works without dash, even though the game is a lot less fun. But maybe I'll have different... Anyway, so I, I would like to like... First time, you get to choose one that doesn't cost an hour that costs what you're starting with. So it, you might be starting with like melee attack or something else. Uh, but first, first thing I want to do is make sure that, uh, is it in game or where is it? Game, there is somewhere in here where I constrain the mouse. Uh, is it pointer? No, it's cursor, is it? Here it is. Uh, let's not do that. Just get rid of this for, for a bit. Um, yeah, also during... Um, uh, let's uh, address this too. During uh, summer, I, I built this. I think I might have shown it on some stream. I built uh, a new keyboard. Um, which is working out pretty well. Uh, I, I really like the, uh, the sound of it. It's weird because it's not like built in a way where the sound should be really good, but listen to this. Right? Um, it's, it's, I don't know if that picks up well on the mic, but it's really working for me in, in the room. Uh, and it's, um, it's like a pretty flat design. Um, so it's got, uh, the difference between this and my previous one, which I have misplaced somehow. Is is that <laughs> Lewis VD keyboard raid? Yeah, welcome, welcome raiders. How you doing? Uh, yeah. So the the main there are two main differences between this one and the the previous one that I built. It's not sculpted in the way the the previous one had like scooped and um, very weird layout, uh, which I like and I still like typing on that. Um, so um, uh, this one is simpler, and I did that for for a reason. Uh, and the reason is that I wanted to learn to type in Colmac, which is like an alternative to QWERTY layout. I kind of gave up on that, <laughs> but uh, have, having like easily so I could easily see the keys, um, so I could look down and try to learn it. Uh, that was the reason for flattening flattening things out. Also making it slightly simpler to build, um, because it's got these. It's a only it's a plate with sockets that you can kind of push in uh, components and cable manage and, and do stuff with. So that's one thing. The other part is that I now have a numbers row, which I was missing on the other one. I was running like that for like a year, and I was always I never really got used to not having the number row. Um, yeah, so this one and the uh, wrist rest and, and so on. It's, it's still got a couple of weird stuff like this. These feet uh, back here are keycaps that I've uh, duct taped on <laughs> to give it a little bit of an angle. But yeah, I'm, I'm getting used to this uh, this thing. Ah, okay, 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 okay. That's me. Let's go back here. Okay, so Raiders, um, we're working on a game called Robes. Yeah, it's Susubatari keycaps. I switched out my uh, 
I, I started out having a set of uh, DSA keycaps on here and the Susu Batteries just sound something good with something good something good with that um, yes yeah, so we're making a game called robes um, which is a game that I made in like one week um, uh, and now I'm coming back to it to kind of make it an actual finished product um, so what you see here is roughly one week's work. Um, I think we did pretty well with uh, with that week's uh, progress. So it's um, it's an arena shooter with uh, some elements from games like Snake or X. Um, yeah, it did pretty well, I think. Um, Robe likes, yeah. I hope so. So the main idea is that um, you will uh, shoot and you will play in this little arena and then between levels you get to buy things and things you buy could be like increasing your crit damage, making things so that you heal on crit. Uh, but you can also buy different um, spells. Um, that are on like left mouse, right mouse, Q and space. Um, so uh, in this case, like I can also upgrade my spell so you can see this one has this size and then I can buy a larger version of that. Um, yeah, it's it's 3D. Um, the sprite, I'm using sprite renderers for like the character and all the enemies and icons and stuff but uh, um, but yeah it's like driven by the shop um, so sacrifice takes some HP and gives you some money I could actually get haste and almost crit unfortunately I couldn't get both uh, so yeah, I haven't worked on this for like three weeks, and now I'm trying to trying to get back to <laughs> uh, like understanding what what I want to do with the game. Uh, and I've I've been doing a lot of thinking during the the vacation period. Um, some of it feels like maybe I'm overthinking it now that I get back to it. It kind of works as it is. I don't have to uh, overcomplicate things. Uh, corpse explosion is fun. Do one more run and then try to figure out what we should do. Which direction we want to go with this. Uh, there's a lot of like effects that's just like missing. And no. Okay, just one more, one more run. Uh, Railgun dash faster dash is fun. Now you get like dash dash and then It's got a recharge Cool um, Literally cool if I get the cooldown speed up And then go for like a blizzard build or something like that I wonder if I want to limit like movement more or if that would make the game a lot less interesting. Like if you couldn't move while shooting or move a lot slower while shooting, that would greatly change the way the game played. I wonder if maybe that wouldn't be that good. Heal on crit. Level 3 dash. I don't think I need that yet. Uh, heal on crit is a boring one. I would like to get a, a spell. And then I get heal, of course. Haste. I still don't. Well, I could do one. I should be able to. Okay, blizzard. Let's go. And then bouncy, I guess. Yeah, let's go. 
Oh, I have, I have Pierce. Or I think I might have forgotten to turn off piercing or no I kind of suck posted an idea for flexible spell cast structure uh, let's read it To understand what what is this supposed to be? This is an instance of this is the what are the instances? All active fragments of the spell just a point of reference back to the game objects. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I want flexible in. in in that kind of way. Um, I am I'm trying not to make us uh, build us into corners with with the spell. So the, the spells are pretty much um, like the separation of concerns so this is the base class for spell, which con it's it's only concerned with like cooldown and when it's pressed and some of those stuffs, and then uh, crap, and then we go into like a specific one. It's more about the effect of the spell. Um, it would make sense to maybe have a spell class and then have a uh, composition to make uh, uh, to, to have the effects come in or something like that to use components instead of inheritance we could work on that um, so this this now has like specific things that are not applicable to all spells, which I think like not all of them have cast time, for example. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we can also look at how each spell is each spell is like a game object with multiple scripts on them or mono behaviors. Um, so in in the composed version of this, we would have one spell that's the spell, and then one that is the effect of the spell that will be triggered when the spell is. Uh, executed so to speak and then we could have different versions of the spell uh, that maybe there's just a regular spell and then we'll have another type of spell that is like the charged spell um, and then that has some kind of yeah, I'm just trying to visualize the the problem here which would be like a spell um, like the hierarchy would be weird maybe in some some cases if we don't go with a compositional approach is there a way to tag child object as prefabs uh, well you you would have a public field that that reference a prefab generally
Um, so let, let's just see how that would th this could look. Because I think one of the first things I want to do is make a lot of spells with different effects, different ways of maybe many spells would have like a charged version. So you can click fast to kind of shoot fast or hold yeah, hold it in or something. And then it would be like a um another one if you if you're holding the the key in and then you get a heavy version of of the spell which yeah um Like a prefab with a child prefab, we can say tag it as an effect of the parent. I don't understand what you're going for here. Um, Let's say I wanted to make something, uh, rewrite this in a way. The first thing we should do is obviously just make sure we have everything committed and, and pushed. So, which we don't. Uh, and I don't know exactly what's going on here. Uh, this is actually scaling the damage source. Also think I have some remnant debug values in my spell. My piercing thing. Oh, pierce is not one of these. I see. Okay, that's also something we should kind of clean up before we go go too far with this so maybe this stream is uh, a lot of like making the project ready for for work <laughs> more or less making it ready for expanding on it it's not a terrible idea <clears throat> let's see um The player projectile now has a starting bound. Ah, it's got a pierce of two by default. Shouldn't it be zero? It's also like naming all of these. To me, it looks a lot like the projectile pierces, even though I changed that. Is it the spell that applies that, maybe? Okay, this is the problem when you're <laughs> when you're taking breaks from your project. Let's see where it gets the the peers from. It doesn't. So I guess. Projectile has some kind of pierce going for it. Here we go, pierce. Uh, that's initialize. Uh, actually, that's where the only place I change this value is here and here. This 
is the problem. I set Pierce to zero and then decrease it to be less than or equal to zero. That's why putting Pierce at zero wouldn't work. Let's see what you're saying here, uh, Mind Rage. Uh, say regular bolt has the corpse explosion trigger as a component can trigger Frost Nova at corpse location where the tag name of the game object is corpse explosion and the game object is Frost Nova with its components. Um, I'm doing things like that in a different way. So um, I have this idea of damage sources. And damage sources have damage parents. So there is every damage that is done is in the game has a root object. Uh, so whenever I do damage, I actually um, um, wait. I screw that up. I uh, whenever I do damage, I actually tell the parent. So it would be like the projectile has the spell as the parent, and the spell would have the players uh like spell casting component and the component would have its damage parent as the player object uh so um the player object actually has a um is, is also damage source and then whenever i do damage i can do stuff with that so for example crit whenever i do damage by any means, um, um, by any means, uh, I do damage. This will get triggered, this callback here, and I will be able to do things like add a crit damage after I added the, the first, first damage. So um, that's one way uh, of doing that. And then, for example, if, if you look at some other blessings, see which ones um, where is it player blessings and then we have something like um, haste on kill blessing um, we um, when this is applied, I check, I have this uh, wrapper thing, a uh, singleton thing that that's, makes it easier to uh, get things from the player. So when the player does damage, I can I can check this. And I can actually check inside of damage info, I can check what, what was the, the source of this damage. So I can check, I can trigger on only fire damage, for example, or only on spell casts or whatever. Um, and then I can like apply haste or I could do corpse explosion, or I could do things like that. Uh, so I don't really need what you're proposing here. I can I can do all everything uh, with this uh, events-based system, which I think is better and more flexible. Um. Anyway, let's try to get back on track here. Uh, don't say. Let's get rid of some of the stuff. What do I do in projectile? Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, we should also be better at committing <laughs> than we was during the, the jam. So, um, what do we do? We said make bounds for. Um, not bounce, pierce. Uh, and then the rest of this is Actually, this one could have been in the, the previous one. Um, the rest of this, make sure it's saved. Where are you now? Fork. Uh, this one doesn't go in. Just a test. 
uh, button down preview. This is all preview, um, preview spells. There we go. Cool. So push this. Now we can start thinking about the next step. So the goal would be to make it scalable and fast to make new spells quickly. And I think the hierarchy works for sure, but it would be maybe better to have some other way of composing these. So I don't get these like, um, should we call it like uh, weird hierarchies. Um, So, um, in this case, I would have to rewrite this class. So it would be similar. And then we would have spell effect. Um, that would be um, kind of getting the spell and then the spell would... Um, the spell would tell the effect when to trigger, sort of. Um, but the problem is kind of, so the dash has these charges, for example, and has a different way of overriding the, the begin cast. And then that's an I enumerator. I just feel like I don't want to, I don't want to build ourselves into a corner where we have to like, override two things to make something work. Let's look at what we have here. Uh, pew pew, that's like a, I guess there is a few of those. That one, that one, that one. Is, is sort of just a normal basic projectile shooter. And that's like automatically when you're holding the, the button down. Um, and then fireball, you gotta kind of hold it in to make the fireball big and then you release and then it shoots it and then it does damage to whatever is in its way um, the cone is kind of different because you click it and then you can move the aim of it over time i think uh, we're gonna find like a lot of these are the same with the different effect at the end um, This one follows the players, it's different from like a Frost Nova, and it's also placed where the player stands. So that could be. Maybe we should write down some um, spell archetypes. Let's, let's do a new column here spell archetypes. So we, we know what, what kinds we need, like a projectile. What else do we have? We have like. Um, Placed like Blizzard. Aura follows the player. Um, then we have something that like completely custom. Um, Some kind of beam seems like something I would like to do. And then just like instantiate prefab rotated for things like the wall.
Let's see what, what we have. So this is a projectile. This is a charged projectile. Make some space here for this. Um, so projectile, charged projectile. This is um, like the cone attacks. Um, I, I realize this is probably a little bit small on, on stream here. Um, so those are probably spawning some kind of prefab anyway. Um, we should also detail which... Um, stats we should be using like maybe it should be like duration should be added so that flame breath could be have a longer duration um, or range would make it bigger i guess um, cooldown is uh, fine <clears throat> That one is a custom one, and this one is an aura. Yep. So this one is projectile. This one is custom. This one is a cone. Frost Nova uh, around the player. That is a placed at player. So it's not like a placed. Um, one is maybe a projectile feels a lot like the cone though but yeah maybe it's, it's what it is it's a projectile this is a beam attack um, so beam is different to a rail style um, this one is a placed prefab. Such a prefab. It could be rotated. Maybe, maybe not. That that's probably fine. Do -do -do -do. This one Nova is like placed under player. Hmm. But it's not quite because it, it kind of it's kind of a projectile thing with the wide cone. If the projectile can have a cone that's 360 and a number, that should be fine. I know, Magus. I've got the best taste in music. Um, it's hard though because of DMCA. Uh, let's see. So where are we at? Nova. An orb is a projectile, I would say. Maybe a charge projectile. Not sure. Maybe not. Maybe that one isn't. Um, ground spikes. That's like a, a totally different thing. Where I'm, I'm seeing this one as like you got where you're aiming and where you're standing and then you make like a line between those like or in the direction of where you're aiming and then you add a, some certain interval you you spawn different things so this one 
could be like the um, uh, line or instance in line, whatever. It doesn't matter what what they're what they're called at this point. Uh, that's not a plugin. That's a custom. That's a thing I wrote myself, Google. So this thing up here, it's called KebVM for Kebab Skull uh, Window Manager. It's a Node.js, uh, NWJS kind of thing. Um, and it's pretty good. It's been working well lately. Oh, I also got a new computer, by the way. This is, uh, it's the same Windows install, but I but, uh, actually totally rebuilt it. So I'm now running a much faster computer. Uh, my old one was like a 6700K from 2015. And this one is uh, Ryzen 5 3800 or something X, I think. Uh, so we should be getting a little bit better stream performance. I've upped the bitrate and a few things like that. Hopefully, uh, maybe we can find it. Anyway, so that that one is one of those placed things. Earthquake is probably placed under the player. Um, placed under player and follow. It feels like these can be um, configured. Bool, uh, follow or something. Then we don't need this guy anymore. The combined. Thanks for the follows, by the way. Uh, tunneler. Um, this is where it's it gets a little bit interesting because now we're combining uh, like the the ground spikes with another thing that happens when you press the second time. Um, maybe that's just a custom thing. Uh, I don't know. This one is like something that targets an enemy or maybe like apply uh, what should we call this effect to a specific enemy I wonder if we want targeting of specific enemies maybe what this is 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 like life mark is more rather you put an a mark on the ground so that any enemy killed in that will give you a health orb or something that's um yeah I don't, I kind of don't think I want specific enemy targeting. Although it would be nice for some th things. Oh, uh, well, uh, here, reanimate, that is like uh, something that's done on a corpse. Uh, but it could also be just reanimate is you click the ground close to some corpses and then uh, just like corpse explosion, it, it's kind of a custom thing where you just click somewhere. It's like a targeted um, ground radius or something. Beam attack that has a specific effect where it gives you HP. So how do I how do I do that in a nice way? Stand next to a corpse. It feels like a custom thing too. Just something that spawns the thing. Uh. Could 
could be an area effect spell too. I'm thinking also about how I could make the, the gameplay will with controller at this point. That was part of the uh, things I don't care about for the, the jam version. But now I feel like controller would be nice. Uh, I also saw someone play um, one of those games with uh, one hand on the controller and one hand on the mouse. That's something I'm kind of interested in, I'd say. Uh, playing um, playing Death's Door, where aiming with the mouse is so much better than aiming with uh, with a controller, but movement in non like perfect diagonals, like what you get to do with uh, with a keyboard, um, like the combination of those two would be great. And I also think it's something that that people find interesting. So it could be like a marketing opportunity to support like the combination of moving with um, stick and aiming with I think I actually potentially already have this yeah I can actually already do this the only problem is I don't have a like the dash is specifically on space I think not on any any particular key on the on the controller shit let's, let's just try that just because it's fun to do. Just so we're not getting anywhere today. We, we don't have to make progress. Uh, input manager. And it's like spell four. It's like. I would say it's the same as jump with, with fired whatever. What could it be? Joystick button five or something? Let's try that and let's call this like uh, spell four. Wait, that jo joystick button is zero now. What? Okay. Not five? Zero would be A. Okay. Um, Unity Xbox controller mapping. We need to uh, change this to use the new input system too. Um, so that would be four, it looks like. Yeah. Four is LB. That would be our dash button, I, I think. We can also have like the. Uh, yeah, let's, let's just call it four. Joystick button four. No. That should trigger spell four, which is dash generally. So yeah, that now works. Okay, let's see here. So we can also not buy things <laughs> because we don't have. Uh, What's the joystick button for left trigger? That's like an axis, apparently. Let's press down is number eight. So let's use that. Uh, the same as E. Or you should be able to buy with a mouse, maybe. But let's, let's just try that. Uh, interact uh, joystick button uh, wait interact mouse 3 uh, let's not do well let's add another one I guess Number one and then we get like interact and then positive button is joystick button 8 I think is the one we talked about let's try that now I should be able to like go around I want to buy Nova I buy it with that and then I also want to have a sacrifice by the rail too I can go here
Ah, I forget which, which button dashes. <laughs> uh, why didn't it work? Also, escape to restart is not that good. Level 2 dash. Oh, I bought the wrong thing because I... Okay. See if this is at, at all, like, plausible. It's kind of nice. To be able to move in, in, like, all the directions you want. And maybe also like move slowly. Yeah, not as. Whoop, was that? Oh, it's when I'm pressing like two buttons at the same time. It kind of freaks out. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so now I'm playing with. Oh, what's what's going on with uh, <laughs> with the frame rate? don't have vsync on that is the problem has it been like this before when i'm playing the game like it's super slow or did i did i press something that that made that happen ah oh, crap no it's not it's just that when i'm not running vsync uh, it prioritizes um, everything except for the video encoding. Ah, damn it. That sucks. You've been watching this at terrible frame rates. And it's not really necessary. Die! Die! Dodging those with the, with the controller and an aiming with the mouse is just pretty good. Adam! What's up, dude? How did the dialogue stuff uh, work out? Hey, Alfred, hey. Uh, just, uh, I missed you there. Uh, screen shake comes from... Uh, different sources i think it's mostly when you take damage and when enemies die i'm not a i'm not 100 um yeah so i i'm still like not really i haven't really begun uh, uh working on the game uh but yeah so i added <laughs> just two bindings to make uh this uh, combination of playing with mouse and um controller at the same time to gain like superhuman aiming capabilities and superhuman movement capabilities like you can move slowly you can move in any kind of direction you're not limited to cardinals and diagonals up oh, go back and then give them what they can take now i'm playing with uh <laughs> controller and mouse which is mm. It makes it a lot easier to dodge these. Uh, but it's also a little bit weird. But I'm not used to like uh, dashing with uh, left pointer like this. Oh, so what do we do here? Do we blend in Blizzard into this? Just swap these around. So Blizzard is right click and middle click is that. Okay, I can I can live with that. And then we have a lot of money now, so let's do we go haste. Haste crit maybe and then oh wait can we afford 
Yeah, we... No, we can almost afford something. So sacrifice gives us what? I could ask you the same, uh, Alfred. Bouncy or movement speed? As you might know, Alfred is my my brother, and he's been working on some music for the game. Let's let's actually see what happens um, when you play the game with that. So Pliny, you get to be quiet. Here is some of the stuff we're working towards. So we don't have sound effects, but. Um, So what do we do? Bouncy or movement? Let's do movement. Let's go. Place is just out of range of that. <laughs> but yeah, shit's working. The Oja release, that's the first, uh, of course. made these spell archetypes um, which is like it's not an insignificant number compared to these so do I really do I really care to implement all of them as specific things and then make them configurable enough um, oh I already have these up this is another, another track, maybe uh, boss, boss music, or something. A loud, is it? Turns down slightly. Soul yeah, boy, gonna <laughs> release. <laughs> True. Uh, that's the most important one. Let's go for a blizzard. What? Why does sometimes exactly at this point the music stops in? Um, no, I'm missing money. Uh, come on, die so I can fix the music. It's weird at that specific point there. Playing it through like the I think yeah, it's a really good start with the music. Of course, it's not it's not like the finished uh, product or anything, but I think it works. I'm just super uh, bored with uh, the spells right now. Go rail and, and see what happens. I do one sacrifice and then here's. I think the rail should shouldn't the rail be more powerful? 
almost like one shot these guys. I think so. Does one shot those? That feels really good. Does it like two shot these? No, it takes. Uh, it, it takes too much. Rail needs to be buffed. Um. Yeah, those are some of the music ideas. I think that it's pretty good. Um. Anyway, so what do we what do we pick as the first kind of code we write after after the jam period of this game? I'm we I'm I'm going to be careful about just rewriting th things that don't need to be rewritten. So that's why I'm kind of feeling do I really need to complicate this? And f what do we win by doing that? There's sometimes it's like the good thing to do and then the um, what should we call it like um, the, um, the the practical thing you, you do like I want to I want to re I just want to make sure I'm set up for for adding all these I got like five spells <laughs> active spells right now and I want to have like a hundred so Maybe it makes sense to actually think about this for a second, how, how to do this. But first, I'm gonna... Um, prudent? I don't know what that, that word is. Um, I've heard it, but... <laughs> I'm gonna go get something to drink and I'll be back in uh, two seconds. Let's make some kind of to-do list here, and I prefer to keep it in um, uh, in here rather than in um, in Milanote. Um, make a new buffer and then uh, language mode to do. And this can be like um, just so we have a an idea of things to do. Or maybe we can write it down and then we can figure out the correct order. Step one, add a little bit uh, of, of this uh, to my crooked <laughs> keyboard uh, wrist rest so it doesn't wobble on me. That's like the, the very first step. Uh, 
Uh, let's add a little bit on this side too. But then I think like one of the first things is like use the new Unity uh, input system so that I don't, I don't have to like check uh, whenever I want to do like a controller thing. I don't want to check which um, which button is which, and then I get another like a PS4 controller, and then that's uh, another button name or something. Um, so new Unity input system. What else do we need? Um, spell system rewrite. Maybe what we should do is actually not do do the spell rewrite, but do the. Um, uh, prototyping to test where we want to go before we do that so we can know like um, um, let's do this prototype spell charges system because maybe that will work out really well and, and be like a fun smart addition to um, to the game um, so instead of, of trying to figure out what to do here like how we should rewrite we should just add things to the current thing and see like okay uh, this works for everything these spell charges so uh, that should be the basis for for this or maybe we prototype the mana system or something Because currently, like the um, the dash spell has these um, charges. And we could move them up to, to like the, the spell uh, part instead. So. weird okay um, what else do we have on our, our, our list here like implementing all the spells of course but also I'm gonna allow the first like two weeks to be a little bit more foundational and maybe not give you a new build every day. Uh, but after that, I want to keep the, um, the game very playable and easy to update to, uh, like push a new version on itch so people can try it out. Um, one idea is also to move that to Steam already uh, for the simple reason that I want to have Steam ready to, to go so that um, I can start getting wish lists and, and, and stuff there. Oh, Geno, yeah, I'm back. On the other hand, limit some business um, things. Like maybe I wanna go uh, exclusive on Epic for a little bit. And if I have the game beta tested and collecting uh, wish list on Steam first. People will get mad. So I don't know. VK was uh, was it was good. It was nice. Um. Uh, yeah. One one thing that comes really early in this list is like. Uh, um, remove touch damage from enemies and then also like add actual uh, uh, melee attack on enemies uh, like actual 
telegraphed melee attack on enemies. Um, So we could we could like start uh, on on the top here and and just yes to get going. I think we need to build momentum. Um, so we're using the new unit input system. Um, I'm just thinking, what would make it? The problem is I'm using strings in a weird way with the, the spells. So which slot they're in, they will kind of know which, um, which button should trigger them. But I could move that to another layer. So instead of of the buttons or instead of the spells themselves reaching out in, into the input system I'm, i will take the thing that keeps which uh but w which uh spell is in which position would then insert into the spell like whether or not the button is pressed um Here I could just list them uh, and implement them. Let's do it later. I think prototype spell charges system would be a good start, actually. So to do that, we'll have to have spell charges on the spell class. See how it's implemented in in the dash spell. Let's. This is where we're starting. I'm just I'm just going there. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got a setup where we have our charges. Will we check that we have a charge. Um, Then whenever we begin a new cast, we remove one charge. Now this will not work with the ones where you can hold the button down. Also need to think about the UI for this. So like this is another thing like the cast time and the cooldown should that always be dependent on which level these are on some spells don't have cast time or cooldown Um, 
Um, It would be cool if cooldown was like a um, if it was a component and then charges could be a component they just compose your spell using that and then it would have an effect and then it would like insert itself somehow into this but maybe that's not the way to do it. Mm. I'm just stalling. Hello, Lawrence. What's up? There's all sorts of weird stuff in here. What did you win? Oh, you, you made it through. Nice. Also, did you play the latest version and still have bad frame rate? You can also turn down screen shake in the... If you press... Like escape. We have a lot of the uh, these two where we have like level. Level, max level, and then we have things like cooldown that would be dependent on that level. got an interface for IHAS level, get level, get max level, and then we can pass that along to things. How, how do I want 20th of July? That's definitely the uh, latest version. Interesting. What, what computer do you have in one? There is also like on purchase could have been a component instead of like an interface chaseable and then the level stuff could live on this instead or as a separate kind of thing Okay, the 2700K is probably a little bit slow. Oh, you're running on Lin Linux too, cool. Do you run it the Linux version or do you run Wine and then... I actually haven't tested it on Linux myself. Uh, I did send it to some people with Linux boxes, but or one person with Linux books. Okay, cool. It's definitely the, the CPU that's the, the problem. The 980 should be very capable of, of handling the game. Um, anyway, to get started, like... This is spaghetti. It's so weird with these different things okay let's start somewhere Where, what do we have 
we have a little bit over an hour and then I'll take lunch. I think I'm gonna cut the stream before lunch as a... Just make sure I take lunch and then come back uh, for a few more hours. And then I'll gotta figure out the schedule too, so we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. So spells. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna create a new file. Base spell. Now it's gonna be called spell. Um, so we can. It's just. It's just rip the entirety of this out. It's gonna make the game unplayable. But we can always go back if, if shit goes uh, too bad here. Um, we still need to have the interfaces I think which maybe should change I was thinking to add some kind of a set of yeah let, let, let's try this see, see if we can make a composable composable spell class um, so unfortunately it's gonna be a little bit of a while before before we uh, get these running uh, would it make sense to have call it a new spell feels bad a spell ah let, let, let's, let's do what we were trying to do here so we want um, Public class spell. Um, it's gonna be definitely a damage source. It's gonna be purchasable and it's gonna have has level. Um, I'm gonna make sure these are implemented. Um, Get level should be Purchase is gonna be similar to what it was before, I think. Oh. Ah, since we're not overriding, yeah, we need we need to call, have a new spell class here because it's going to be really weird uh, for a while otherwise. It's just... Let's call this new spell class something else. Uh, let's call it base spell. I don't like it because... Um, compose spell. There we go. Um, now... I guess these are fine.
Okay. On purchase, do we do something weird with that? In our yeah, we do. Um, okay. Maybe this I has level should be a component too. Um, this will be our new interface, so um, the button itself shouldn't need to know which um, or the spell doesn't need to know which button is what it is. We will just change that from the uh, from the other other side. And then we'll need to have some kind of thing that runs, and the previous one. Uh, Has this begin cast concept, which is like an I enumerator that you can override. This is where we would we would like have another way of doing this where we would have like say we have the charges concept or we have a cooldown um we would have something like i pre precast and then we would go through a list of those of components that have that um Hey, Spius! Thank you for the raid. What's going on? Is that a slightly bigger raid than usual? Have you been growing? How is your stream? Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's just me who, who don't for, uh, don't remember. Um. So do we do interfaces? Yeah, I think we do. I public interface. I precast um, should have like a public uh, I enumerator. Um, oh, sounds good. Sounds good. So we do something before the cast. Um, Should the spells have like an update loop that checks if the button is pressed and it's not currently casting? Um, maybe it should be called like is active. So we have like a public virtual void update. And then we check if uh, not is active and button pressed uh, and we can cast then we want to start a cool routine that's the casting thing This is the question. This should be on, like, we have a precast, 
we have an interface for the cast. Um, it could be something like that, yeah. This one will have something like a I enumerator um, I'm not sure what what they call the these like it could could be called effect or um, cost is maybe it's spell cast let's call it spell cast and we pass the composed spell as spell. And then postcast will have a bool. Um, no, we will have another I enumerator, um, which will be like postcast. Maybe this should be during cast. I during cast. The question is also like, can I add multiple of the same type? So it's kind of when you're shooting. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, just pass this along and just. The idea would be to to get all the the things here. Maybe I do this not every cast sequence, but in during some kind of initialization method. So we have like a list of pre, post, or uh, pre, during, and post list. question is how do I on the, in the precast we will like have uh, charges which if we should be able to cancel the cast um, at any point so we need to we need to do that thing somehow but I think we can just call a function on the spell it would be nice if it could like return but it's harder to do that I think So we're gonna need uh, what? Those, I guess. We also have like equals new. Oh, they're all precast. Um, Get components uh, quickly tab back into here.
Um, for each var precast in uh, precasts, why are these capitalized? Why is not control? Ah, uh, it's because it's not control. Okay, oh, there we go. See if this works out. I, I don't know. Precast. Um, maybe something like this. happen in sequence I guess so we will just yield precast um, precast this so this would be like a short up spell so you hold it in it grows this kind of ball and then when you let go it Let's go. So it's possible that it will be canceling. Um, we'll implement it like this for now. Um, alternatively, what we could do is have a callback that happens that we pass. But. If cancelled, uh, we just break. Uh, if not, cancelled, we will go on to the next thing, which is a similar for loop. So let's do for each uh, var during cast in during casts yield return during cast during cast this and then we do if cancel break um, let's add some comments pre During, no, we do exactly the same as here. Post. Um, when we cancel something, we might still want to do. Uh, The cooldown, so can I cancel during? I think even if I canceled the post, no, if I cancel the post, should not happen, okay.
I was thinking to add some debug here so we can know when it canceled, but let's, let's do that when we need it. We got a good entry point to do it. So, uh, um, Cool, so now we have this cast sequence that can can do different things. Um, I'm thinking we should set that we're active here. Is active is true. And then at any point here, it will be like, is active is false. Um, cool, so now we can add like, um, a folder for cost sequence uh, stuff. For example, we could have the uh, cost time um, mono behavior that implements the i pre uh, cost interface um, Just run the precast. We, uh, somewhere in here, we should have the can cast, and that should check all the precasts, can casts. <clears throat> if uh, can cast, no, if uh, precast. All um, precast precast dot can cast this. Yes, return. And then we're gonna have like some other things, like maybe the player is dead and things like that. Well, then you shouldn't be able to cast. But as long as you have all the all the things, so we could we could have like um, um, we need some kind of um, cost charges. Yes. Um, For example, and then we could have a cooldown, cost cooldown, I post cost. Just see if we can get this decently set up here. I feel like I'm doing a little bit not what I set out to do, but. Um, Public, and then we can have like rank stat float. Um, cost cooldown, let's call this duration instead. Duration, uh, duration dot get value by spell dot get level and then return yield new uh, oh wait uh, new wait for seconds and then we pass duration to that so that's the, our cooldown now um hey Vinny Keller what's up 13 months that's that's pretty crazy 
So cost charges, um, public, and this this is could also be like the number of charges would be. Um, thank you, Soundwire. That's uh, that's really nice to hear. Then we'll have have like uh, int current charges zero. Um, almost feel like I precast and uh, I can cast should be different different things yeah they should let's do this a little bit more right from the start here so this should be another one I this I can cast it's a little bit more um, effective to perfect that's wrong. Also, this is something we have to make. Why is this here? So we have, th this one is a little bit hard to Im implement right now, but can cast, we need pretty much all of them. And another thing that, that kind of makes it possible for us to reduce one, uh, like per tick. So you're holding down the button. It kind of does, tick -tick 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 -tick, shoots a lot of things. And then that's the, uh, the charge so we got to like spend the charge somehow um, so do we 
set that up to be like precast. Not entirely sure. No, well, if you wanted to work with both the hold down the button to shoot and like click multiple times. Hmm. Well, we'll see. But let's say it's got the I can cast first. We just return current charges as larger than zero. Um, but then we also need I pre cast uh, to make sure. No, do we need? Why do we need that? Not really. But we need a tick like that that's every time we do something so let's go back to compose spell and add another one which is like could it be it could be in here actually void um, tick cost But this would be on the effect that triggers... Uh, the during cast. So it calls tick cast on all during casts. You can do that on the spell and then just reflect it over. So we do something like this. Public. Um, void, void, public void, uh, tick cast. Use the Sunwire, you can also use the uh, the template or generics version of that with the uh, ang angle brackets instead of the typo. Looks a little bit cleaner and also gets gets you the right uh, uh, object type back. With like, uh, yeah. Just do that. Yep. If not, if it doesn't work, we will we will find out really soon here when I start testing this. Um, okay, so now now we want to have I during cast, and we want to have I post cast. Now we don't need post cast, do we? No, I don't think so. During cast implemented. Um, Oh, explicitly, we don't need that. <clears throat> so this, we can start casting if we have charges. Uh, during, we will cancel if we... Um, if we run out of charges, somehow. Oh, it doesn't? 
Are you sure? So when we when we take, we run out of charges, then we want to signal that we want to cancel, I guess. Is there a reason why not to do that? But if we cancel by running out of that, then we need to trigger the, the cooldown. spell we have um, we could we could do Necessarily, but yeah. Do, 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 do. I think uh, further back than that somewhere, but I don't, I'm not sure about the find object of type, but get component I think works. The problem with interfaces is that you can't assign them in the um, in the inspector window. Like you can't drag something as a reference to an interface. That still doesn't work. Otherwise, I think it works in many many cases. to get this every frame it doesn't matter it's like five calls per frame the current charges is less than max charges and last tick uh, or time dot time minus last tick um, oh we're gonna need that too are we um, Recharge uh, interval. Make this a local for all occurrences. Um, This one we're going to rename, uh, isn't it? Like that, and then we can rename this to... Yes. 
So um, if that is larger than um, recharge interval dot no larger than recharge interval, then we want to uh, recharge. Why do I keep pre typing void instead of void? Do it again, void, recharge. And then this will just set the um, current charges to be um, the max charges, which we have here. Kind of wanted to have self commenting code self-explaining code by but I can just do this instead um, Plus plus has interfaces. I don't know that that is uh, such a problem somewhere. But. Doesn't C sharp have interfaces or a C plus plus? I guess they're called abstract classes in. Uh, there <clears throat> so the time until recharge So what's going to happen is uh, we're going to cast our spell, we're going to spend a charge, and then we remember last tick is going to be the current time. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, I think... We're going to figure out what to do here. Uh, but in general, we will um, we will tick down our charges, and if uh, and we'll remember what time it was the last time we ticked. And then in the update method, we will figure out what the current time is minus the last tick, and then check if that's larger than recharge interval. And then we will recharge and remember the last tick there, so it doesn't do this every. Frame. It doesn't really matter though, because it's just gonna set this number. But I guess that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, But how are we gonna tell something that this didn't work out? I think what we're gonna do is return a bool from tick cast instead. Uh, This is if it worked, so this is post uh, this. So if it's larger or equal to zero, we're fine.
Yeah, that worked. We got to zero. That works. Yeah. And then we have to change our compose spell, like the tick tick cast to return a bool. And then um, our tick cast here should also return a bool. So that if all of these returns true, so we will return um, during casts um, all during casts during cast during cast um, tick cast this. So this is iterating through all the, those and returning true if all of them were true, otherwise not. And then we got to call this function and check if if uh, if that worked. Sounds good. Re reasonably good. Fine. And then cooldown we already implemented. Um, Uh, I, don't, I don't. I'm not sure that is true, Sandwire. Like you don't have to have a C plus plus. Like they don't have to re-implement Link because they're still running. They're still running the C sharp as C sharp code. It's not unless they're doing IL two CPP. But like, it do doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be uh, have a one to one relation to what what lives in the C plus plus layer. Um, so all the, the, the code I write in C-sharp will still be run as C-sharp code. Um, and when there is things like components and so on, like the, the find object of type or get components with, I'm not entirely sure how it works internally, but it probably enumerates which uh, C sharp objects live as components on some something, not the C plus plus representation. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, with IL two CPP, IL two CPP will handle that thing somehow. I would guess. So. Let's see what Unity says now. So cost time. Um, that needs I precast. Um, This in theory should just be returning. Yeah, it should show some UI or tell some UI to be shown rather. Try uh, Sunwire. Try try decompiling. Use IL. Uh, what was it called? Um, decompiling IL. Uh, which is like what C sharp compiles to on some of the DLLs or whatever that that's uh, posted with the uh, Unity game. It's still, unless it's compiled using IL to CPP, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be IL code, the compiled thing. Um, Uh, 
I think most Windows, for example, games will not use IL2 CPP to compile the the C sharp code. Uh, if you're doing uh, iOS, I think it's it's different. But yeah, let's see here. High enumerator precast. We want to do uh, a var start equals time dot time while start and then we'll do var duration equals duration dot get uh, value spell dot get level but well, start uh, minus time dot time is less wait other way around time dot time is larger than the start or the same um, Uh, then we can have some public bool uh, is costing, um, which just returns a is costing. Do I? Yeah, I guess. Um, and then we can we can kind of update some other thing which is like boo start started costing is float min value and then uh, started costing equals start I guess do we really need that then no yes do start started costing um, and then we could actually no that's fine started casting is there and then public float um, since started costing would be like uh, time dot time minus started costing and then we could like do costs uh, progress is since started costing divided by uh, then we don't know the duration here um, that this is for uh, for the UI to to work so we just update cost progress to be um, these values divided like this then that just hides the yeah together thing and then can we do private getters instead will that be prettier don't know okay 
This one is not implemented. Oh yes it is, okay. Uh, the problem, the cost charges, we don't need during cast. Or do we? For tick cast? Yes, and then that means during cast returns null. That's not perfect. Okay. Okay, so that is the first part. Uh, the second part is this actual during cast thing that we need to have. So our compose spell will run this during cast. say no, this is where we would implement like the spell effects um, let's do like a projectile cost projectile or something Gonna be a mono behavior. Uh, let's tab into there for a second. What? Wait a second. I forgot to remove this part. Cost projectile. This will implement I during cast. And then we will easily implement this interface. Uh, why would I want a tick cast on this? Let's save judgment for that later. I think I tick cast could be a good idea here. So during cast, uh, we want to have um, some different things. Like we want to have rank stats for um, some stuff. Like we want to have the cone. We want to have the yeah, but let's start with um, let's start with start with the interval, uh, which is a float. Um, While spell dot button pressed, yield return new wait for seconds, and then we do like interval dot get value uh, spell dot get level. We can probably have this outside interval. of course like that and then
yes. That is true. Or, um, wait. And then, if, uh, then we do the tick. So we do spell dot tick cast. Um, rather, if not, then we know that we had a problem. And then we want to cancel. So then we just break. Um, and then we want to like fire a spell and, and, and do all the things. So to do uh, fire projectile. Maybe we need that. Like we need a um, projectile. Now we have other stuff. Like we don't have a good way of getting the player the aim of something. <clears throat> um Easy way would be to have a uh, public or a um, singleton for aim and, and stuff like that, but or tied to the player object, and the player object is kind of accessible to the spell somehow in this spells class. Um, This should be auto projectile or something because it kind of is auto fire maybe uh, stood uh, I do that because say um, say you have something like this uh, let's, let's take a simple example. Uh, list something. Can I can I get? Can I get this? Ah, come on. So this is this is. Uh, one example but we could write it this as var test instead i think this is more easy to read uh, but the real thing is when you do something like uh like it's a list of some uh key value pair of of like some i equality comparer uh bool whatever uh and a string or something. Uh, it doesn't even, because I haven't added all the, I need one more. So you get this, but then you could also write it as this. And it's just like, if I want to change this to, oh, it shouldn't be a string, it should actually be an int. I only have to change it in one place. And it's uh, easier to see what, what's actually going on here. Um, uh, 
Yeah. That's one of the reasons. Um, it also makes the code a little bit resilient to change. Like if if you if you were to say float uh, something equals ten f or I don't know ten, and then you have um, some. I'm trying to come up with a contrived example here, but uh, that works. Or like it, it's an int. And then you, uh, well, maybe it's a float. And they have a for loop or something which declares it's as an int here. Oh, let's do this instead. So it's int this, and then for some reason, you actually want to add it in halves. So you do plus equals 0 0.5 here. It doesn't matter to the internals what, what this is, but this will fail, but if I put var here, uh, it would would it still work. It will uh, figure out that it's um, a float if you do this. Something like that. I don't know. the lunch button in your phone. <laughs> Good example might be a method that takes a float for first and you change your mind to an int. If it it's a var, it doesn't need to be changed at the declaration. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe. I'm not 100% sure. But this is a auto projector. And then... Um, Ah, whatever. So now we should be able to compose a spell using these. It doesn't work, of course, but it uh, it should be possible to do it in, in in the editor. So let's say we have our shop items here, spells, and we create a new um, new pew, or let us call this like arcane bolt or something. And then we add like a uh, composed spell. Um, and then we add like this one should have charges. <clears throat> and then the recharge interval can be like the same on all. And, it, and it's like two seconds or something. Um, and then we need three values for how many charges it should have. It should have like five, ten, and fifteen or something. Uh, so that's the cast charges. Uh, and then we need the projectile cost auto projectile we need the projectile values we need only one we just find our projectile here player projectile pull that in there the interval uh, that could actually be different dependent on which level you're at so it could be like point one point zero point or zero eight and then 0 0.05 or something. Maybe this is to to start at 15, bring it down to one, and then then we go to 85. And then height should work with these values too. So that's the next part. So. 
Oh, uh, and then we, let's add a cooldown. Uh, and the duration should be like the same. It should be like it, once you release the button, you have to wait for one second to start cast again. I don't know. <clears throat> we need a way to to get to the player object so we can get the stats. But first, I need to uh, have a peek. Be right back. I think that's the problem, Sunwire. Yeah. Okay, so now we, we, we have our little spell here. It's it's kind of set up to be uh is a compost like this. Now the big problem becomes that we have this spells action um, which has a list of spells, not composed spells.
And this is gonna break everything, I think. What? Yeah, they don't have equip functions yet. Wonder if I should have equipable? Uh, probably not. This is also different. This is also different. Sounds good, Soundwire. Okay, let's see how much breaks when we when we get this. So. Compose spell, let's give it a equip and uh, unequip thing. <clears throat> um, I also don't know that I need the, the slot here. Pretty much always. I did try the JS one way back when. Um, Should be somehow um, I, I feel like these spells things that that should be possible to uh, have interfaces for I spell equip or something like that so so I can get these equip and unequip um, yeah, they don't, they don't really need to do anything right now, um, except re remembering which spells we have. So let's, let's have it here, like, uh, not there, but... Spells action, spells. And then we have a public getter for the, these, so... Uh, And it would be nice with player too, because that's what we're generally gonna use. So that's about it, I think. We just need to save which spells. So we just do like um, this dot spells equals spells. Um, Yeah, let's let's try this. But I bet that there are some other things that use this that, that are gonna gonna break now. Like the UI stuff. It's pressed and so on. Yeah. Uh, and this is not how we're gonna do this anymore. Now instead we're gonna uh, shake spell one, spell two and spell three. And set that up on the spell instead. So we also have this casting spell. Um, I don't know exactly why we're doing this. It's so I can't do like anything while I'm casting something else. But I think we want to do that in a slightly different way. 
Um, Let's do this instead. Uh, not for each, but for... This is where I generally don't use var, by the way. Um, but I don't know why. I probably should. Spells.count. Here's another pretty good... reason to use var because I don't necessarily need to know what spell is and if I change what spell is what type it has all right um, whoops Um, no, that was correct. That is not correct. Spell and then I. Why don't I just do that? Here we want to update that, so let's just get rid of that casting spell. It's going to mess with a bunch of things. So the spells, I think this is how we do it for now, and then we, we change it. So spell one, yeah, that makes sense. And then here we go, like spells action doesn't have a definition for casting spell. Blah, blah, blah. Cast bar, it doesn't work. Um, spell icon doesn't have what it takes. Um, these these are problems. Wow, this is a lot of a oh, one ring. So for now, just to get things going. Let's hide this. I can see more stuff like the shop item. That's probably where we might want to save the icon information and stuff like that. Um, so that's one of the classes. And then, oh yeah, of course. Wait, is there a good reason? Maybe I can actually have these uh, come in. Yes, sir. Just keep this like this for now. We can we can do stuff with that later once we take the next step. Uh, then we have casting spell doesn't exist. How this? We're gonna remove the entirety of this uh, spell class later on. Blah. Floating cast ball. Part. Spell to compose spell. Um, it's compiler. Good. Um, 
So let's see if we can actually make this happen. Put Arcane Bolt in there, for example. Now it's not gonna do anything, but potentially at least... Uh, I guess we're not gonna see anything because it doesn't do anything. Why doesn't this one... Shouldn't this one have... Max and min level? Oh, it's always gonna be... Okay. That's fine. Um, Aha, look. My kid has made some kind of drink. Tells me it tastes delicious. Um, can we at least like do uh, a debug log? Fire! See if it types anything out or whatever. But a lot of this is gonna be super broken now for a while. Spells zero is not set up. Ah, I see. Come man. Okay. A compass legs. Food is done. I think this means. Um, this means it's the end of the first part of the stream today. Uh, I'm gonna cut it and I'll be back in about an hour or so. says fire down there that's that's good so let's uh, not maximize and uh, let's see clear oh we have the null ref here the dash spell yeah. this is because the dash spell has like it's not set up interesting well, we'll fix that so let's see if I pr press once I get one fire and then I hold it in we get a few and then it, it kind of stops for a second you can see it counts this number up not this one so we'll fix that let's we can just uh, hide these for now we gotta... uh, six and then stop and then seven eight, uh, twelve yeah and then 18 and then 24 yeah 30 so why does it count to six shouldn't it be counting to five yeah it's it's like one too many oh diatro um ah i come on for a minute just must enough He's really excited about that drink. Um, so let's see what, how this is used in uh, here just yes, before we go. So cost auto projectile will uh, do this after it's done and then break if that was not successful. So it will be like set to one too high it feels like let's check charges again so when do we reset we set this to max charges so it sets it to five and then we 
cast one projectile. Cast one projectile and we reduce it to four. That's one thrown. And then we reduce it to three. We reduce it to two. We reduce it to one. And then we reduce it to zero. And zero is still okay, so that's five. And then we don't we don't stop. Um, so we should set this to larger than zero to make the numbers add up. So if we, we should be putting in like four there, but because it counts the number of like zero is one number. Zero, zero, one, two, three, four would be five. But let's do larger than zero. Um, instead so now it should count um, it's got a clear. now I shoot it's gonna say what five and then wait and then 10 and then 15 and then 20 yeah and then I can't shoot directly after I release because of the cooldown which is not something I want on this maybe but or at least a, a lot lower value um, yeah let's see uh, see who wants a raid are you still here Spius? Tim could need a raid I think Spius deserves the raid Yeah, come back in about an hour or a little bit less. Um, so uh, maybe half an hour, something like that. Be nice to spy us and hugs and kisses. See you soon.